About 66 million years ago, an object estimated to be 6 miles wide, that's almost 10 kilometers wide, slammed into Earth, triggering a cataclysmic series of events that resulted in the demise of non-avian dinosaurs. Now, scientists think they know where that object came from. Here are the details. According to new research by the Southwest Research Institute in Colorado, the Chicxulub impact, which scientists say killed off the dinosaurs, was caused by a giant, dark, primitive asteroid from the outer reaches of the solar system's main asteroid belt, situated between Mars and Jupiter. This region is home to many dark asteroids, which are space rocks with a chemical makeup that makes them appear darker than most asteroids. Geochemical analysis of the crater also suggests that the impacting object was part of a class of carbonaceous chondrites, a primitive group of meteorites that have a relatively high ratio of carbon and were likely formed very early on in the solar system's history. Simulating over hundreds of millions of years, the model showed thermal forces and gravitational tugs from planets periodically slingshotting large asteroids out of the belt. On average, an asteroid more than six miles wide from the outer edge of the belt was flung into a collision course with Earth once every 250 million years, the researchers found. This calculation makes such an event five times more common than previously thought and consistent with the Chicxulub crater created just 66 million years ago. One of the biggest risks facing humanity right now is the fact that we don't know if a massive asteroid is on its way to kill all life on Earth. This is because space is so big that even huge asteroids are almost impossible to spot. But now NASA is creating the best tool for spotting an Earth-killing asteroid before it's too late to do anything about it. Here are the details. NASA reports that it has green-lighted a plan to finish and launch its near-Earth object surveyor mission by year 2026. The NEO surveyor will be a 6-meter-long space telescope that will use infrared imaging to boost the chances astronomers have of finding large objects that might hit Earth. Every night, astronomers across the globe use ground-based optical telescopes to find new near-Earth objects, or NEOs, and determine whether they pose a threat to Earth or not. But these ground-based optical telescopes are only able to look for NEOs in the night sky. Currently, there are no known NEO impact threats to Earth for the next century. However, unknown NEOs can lead to unpredicted impacts, like the Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013, which went undetected because it came from the direction of the sun. The NEO surveyor will use infrared sensors that can help astronomers find objects approaching Earth during the day from the direction of the sun, something that can't be done from ground-based observatories. In 2010, NASA completed its goal of discovering 90% of all near-Earth objects larger than one kilometer in width. In 2005, the agency was directed by U.S. Congress to find 90% of NEOs larger than 140 meters in width. To date, NASA says it has found 40% of the objects within this range. An enormous comet from the outskirts of the solar system is heading towards Earth. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is a thousand times larger than the average comet and it's approaching at a high rate of speed. Here are the details. Live Science reports that a huge comet that's so large it's classified as a minor planet has been spotted beyond a Uranus and is coming toward Earth for a very rare visit in 2031. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is still far away and hard to see, but the current estimate is that its icy core is around 100 kilometers in diameter, which is extremely large for a comet. It'll make its closest approach in 2031, when it'll sail just outside of the orbit of our Sun's sixth planet, Saturn. Normal long-period comets take more than 200 years to complete an orbit around the Sun, but this one is estimated to take a whopping 5.5 million years to complete its orbit. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein comes from the Oort cloud, a spherical cloud of icy objects framing our solar system at around 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun, that's 100,000 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Scientists estimate this comet could itself be from as far away as 60,000 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Like all comets, this one will round the Sun and head off back to where it came from. Another comet that might have originated in the mysterious Oort cloud is Halley's Comet, which is visible from Earth every 75 years. Halley is therefore the only naked eye comet that can appear twice in a human lifetime. It last appeared over Earth in 1986 when it stood out clearly in the night sky. It will next appear in 2061. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft is about to become the first American spacecraft to grab a piece of an asteroid and bring it back to Earth. 
During its many months of orbiting and analyzing the asteroid, the spacecraft found signs that the asteroid might contain water and organic compounds. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft has been orbiting around asteroid Bennu for almost two years and is scheduled to grab a sample from the 500-meter-wide space rock on October 20th. Having spent months analyzing the composition and surface of the asteroid, the spacecraft is now ready to fold up its solar panels, unfold its sampling arm, and slowly descend to touch the asteroid's surface. When its probe touches the surface, it will blow high-pressure nitrogen gas into the soil, stirring up loose material. A filter within the sample head will trap rocks and dirt while allowing the gas to escape into space. Next, the spacecraft will fire its thrusters and retreat to a safe distance with its precious cargo. Back in orbit, a special camera will be used to make sure the sample head does not have harmful debris sticking out of it. Next, the spacecraft will measure the mass of the sample by extending the sampler arm all the way and spinning around. The craft will then calculate the change in its inertia to determine the sample's mass. If the sample mass is more than 60 grams, the spacecraft will store the sample head inside its return capsule. The capsule will protect the sample during the violence of re-entry, after which it will release a parachute to stabilize and reduce speed for a safe touchdown in Utah. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.